Thanks very much, guys, for joining. I think we've got it's the first Odeon Grey World Cricket Club podcast, which is well, people have to come up with a different name of it because it's too like it's too hard for me to say. But effectively, where we like we were supposed to start cricket this weekend, so what we're looking to do for launching a new website is just to get something on there where we can have a bit of a chat with the players, get a bit um, familiar, and um, hopefully it helps um, everyone stay a bit more um, better connected. So what we're going to look to do, we've got a lot of the, the players around here. We're going to ask a few questions and um, obviously you guys feel free to interact. So if anyone says anything against your name that you feel besmirched, you, you're more than welcome to have it, like put your line in defence. But we'll start with um, Nick, captain of the freeze. And so um, a question for you, Nick, what aspect of cricket do you most miss about whilst, whilst we're locked down? You're on mute if you're talking. Nick, you're on mute. <laughs> Fucking star. <laughs> That's how he captions it. He's always up here. One down early doors. I need a bit of time to think about the answer. Um, so, no, Chris, uh, it's it's obvious for me, really. It's Saturday afternoon, seeing all the guys. Uh, we see a few of them on Sat on Wednesdays at Nets, but all the banter in the changing room, what I'm going to do when I get out there and I smash that bowler around. And five minutes later, people walking in with their stumps in a mess. Um, it's all a chat with the lads and the, and the ladies. And uh, yeah, really missing it. Cool. Cheers, mate. And thanks for everyone else, giving everyone else a tutorial on how to use the mute button. Very, very good deliberate mistake on that. <laughs> <laughs> Over to you, Dano. Uh, yeah, I'd probably just echo what, Chris, uh, what Nick says. Just the banter in the changing rooms when you rock up. There's no better feeling than rocking up on a... Saturday afternoon, just wearing the ghost. It's, it's what we work all week for, and you look forward to your weekends. Like, yeah, you when it rain when you rained off, you lose you lose your Saturdays, and you're just like, oh, what am I, what am I gonna do? But this is it's not even started yet. And it's I was on about it at work yesterday. They said, oh, you're just looking a bit miserable. I was like, yes, I should be playing cricket rather than sat in work. Um, yeah, it's probably that competitive edge as well. Um, so I, could, I can imagine there's quite a lot of people that are competitive and they're just not getting that energy out. They're just having to sit and just find something else to be competitive. Cool. Yeah, and, and Zach, I suppose for you, you had a, a massive breakthrough year last year, for, like established first team player. You, you must have been like um, chomping in the bit to go and start this season. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's pretty disappointing, obviously. We're not out there now. Um, just thinking on Saturday, like, sunny day it would have been great to be out there like um yeah so really missing that yeah. and that how about you what, what do you miss most about it uh fairly similar to that really last year was my first season sort of back playing um so good winter behind us this year was really looking forward to getting out and playing um and sort of a bit like everyone else being with the team that sort of club atmosphere particularly after the game as well um, Shawnee, as you were stepping up to be the, the captain of the twos this year, you must have had some like big plans. Is like it, it must be quite a frustration where you're not sure when you're going to get started with it. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm convinced we would have been promoted this year, um, but never mind. Um, there's yeah, we've got it there, Shawnee. <laughs> <laughs> but um, now we'll see. Um, next year, next year's our year. Cool. Mate, yeah. you look at that team that Phil put up the other day. You probably wouldn't have lost a game. That, yeah, that, I was very happy with the team you gave me. <laughs> You're welcome, team, John. Yeah. For me, um, that's what a second team should look like. It should be full of experience with a mixture of young in there as well, which it had. So, I think, I think the availability it. was a bit unrealistic, though, from the <laughs> first game of the season. Well, to be honest, I, I looked at it first because I looked at the twos and saw I wasn't in it, so I got optimistic I'd be in the ones. Then I wasn't in the ones and looked in the threes, I wasn't even in that. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to put you in my team, Chris. We've got a fourth team better. organised for you, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll bet you, so there was no trampolining or anything like that this year, so you, you were all ready for the season, no injury, so no, you I must was... be... <laughs> That was quite a bit this year, thankfully. But no, I was, I was quite excited to get out, and we've got quite a young side this year. A lot of um, like the girls have started to turn 13 and stuff, so they've been a come into our side so yeah we're going to have big numbers i also miss running that out as well because that's fun <laughs> <laughs> cheers <Becky>. sorry <laughs> I don't you don't need to practice that one anymore 
<laughs> no, we call that <laughs> Sorry. Uh, uh, Nets, but like for you as well as like a, obviously a, a player would be interesting, but it also be good to get your perspective on like the coaching side as well, where obviously just like we're, we're halfway through winter nets and like doing that for the the juniors, yeah. um, as well as coaching and player, and you must be gutted. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was just I was going to say being a player and a coach, um, what everyone said so far. So that team spirit as a player is is what I really miss really this year. Sort of getting out there and for me having a busy week as well, working, just getting out there and taking my mind off off life, if you like, you know, and playing out there on on, on the wicket. Um, it's a totally different sort of environment for me. But also the coaching. I mean, as, as a coach, we build up for it throughout the whole winter. And I've been quite keen, you know, through every winter in organising winter coaching and also indoor league as well, which, which we've not done too badly in. Um, so it's a build up to that and then for the kids to get out there and then to play, just watching them enjoy playing the game for what they've learned during the winter as well. Um, and especially when they win, you know, they're, they're, even if they lose, the kids, Odin, Odin and Greywell kids are the, the best losers out there. If they do lose, they're, they're brilliant. Uh, and if they win, they're even better. You know, the, the, the team spirit is just amazing. It's, it's the best I've seen out of all of the clubs, definitely. Um, so, yeah, and... I do also miss, particularly from last season and the season before, other teams, particularly uh, uh, Maria and um, Ali Smee's, Tina, Tina Smee's teas. They were delicious. Good <laughs> shout, that tea. So I miss Good that. shout, mate. <laughs> Best teas in Hampshire. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the coaching side of things, I think it's a shame for the kids because they do work really hard and they do want to play. I mean, Daniel, um, obviously, is desperate to get out there um, and play a few games. Um, but they're resilient. They're, they'll they'll get back into it again when we, when we can get get back out there. So it'll be good. Okay, do you think? No, thanks for that, um, Phil. I suppose you made your debut. Was it 1965? And so it's like, they're, they're, have, have there been any seasons where we you like haven't started the season? Uh, no, I can't remember a season like this. Usually, you know, it's all. I'm I'm usually injured and tend to miss sort of half the season, or you know, last year he gets suspended, but. Um, now this one is particularly boring, I must admit. Um, you know, bowling around the wicket to my nine-year-old son, it just doesn't have the same cut as uh, playing away at South Wilts on a Saturday afternoon. Um, yeah, no, I, yeah, I think we're all um, we're all getting a little bit, a little bit bored. There's only a certain amount of uh, tennis balls you can throw against the wall and catch or, or drop if you're me. Um, so yeah, let's let's hope <laughs> we move forward pretty quick. Yeah, I think everyone will echo that. Um, we've got Kieran on the line as well. Like I know, obviously, Kieran, you, you've been an established first team player for a number of years, but obviously th- th- this year as well, um, you took on the head of grounds role as well. So I know you had a lot of plans on that. It, the, the, what, what, what's the biggest thing that you think you're missing out on at the moment? I think it's, it's more or less the social side of just hanging out with like your mates, teammates, and having a laugh at the end of a game. Really, you can see. Enjoying having a laugh throughout a game, but it's it's after that when you can just sit down, relax, and just have a laugh. Cool. Uh, cheers, guys. I think we'll, we'll we'll go back to you again now, Nick. So it'll be um, instead of looking forward and hopefully we'll get to have some cricket, it'll be good to look back a little bit and understand what, what what's your favourite moment like representing Odium. Well, um. It's quite easy, actually, Craig. I mean, I've only been a member here for four years, um, but I've been playing cricket for about 45 years, even longer than Phil. And uh, last year, I never, until last year, I never fancied myself as any good with a bat, but I managed to. An opening um, came up for me to open the innings and, you know, a dream came true and I knocked up a a century. So I've got to say that is my favourite memory one of my favourite memories of cricket of all time. It just happened to be at OGCC and um, some of my good mates were there to watch it. So that was great. I, I was there for that one as well. And I could combine it with Nettie's good memory as well as I was enjoying the teas at the um, thirds as well. So it was a great day all around. <laughs> <laughs> Over to you, Dano. Oh, well, I'm obviously the same as Nick. I've only been, I was only member for three, is it three years now. Um and actually achieved quite a lot in the first year, obviously <coughs> winning the league and promotion. Um, and then I think the second year we just established ourselves in what in County Two and then my season was cut short 
last year, um, but had a decent performance at Bournemouth when it looked like they were going to win and ended up taking five bag in a game that we should have comfortably won and been home, having a beer by four o'clock rather than ten o'clock. Eight, nine, ten o'clock, yeah. Um, but maybe going to Littleton and actually confirming that we'll, we won the league. No, no, we didn't win the league. We got promotion, and then we had to wait an extra week, didn't we, to confirm that we've actually won the league. Yeah. So, yeah, I've, I've got a few in just a short period of time. Excellent. Uh, and Zach, I know, like we mentioned, like, it was your breakthrough the year last year as well. But I know you and your brother have, have come through the cult system and had a lot of success there. Um, and probably a, a lot of good memories. What, what's the highlight for you? Um, probably last year in the um, the guy duel. Uh, we played against Old Basing and that was, yeah, it was such a close game. And, yeah, hitting the winning runs at the end was, like, yeah, pretty special. So, that's got to be it. Yeah, definitely. Excellent. Uh, and that, what, how about you? What's the highlight? Uh, has to be the Cricket World Cup final day. Uh, the women were playing uh, up on the ground. Uh, we had a bit of a batting collapse and... It was fairly tense with some of our youngsters sort of pulling us through at the end. We had the whole club out on the balcony watching us instead of the World Cup. Uh, <laughs> and then obviously afterwards, the match uh, after the match was just pretty amazing in the, in the clubhouse with everyone. Yeah, so, yeah I, was, I was on a flight for that one, so I missed the World Cup final and I was expecting to get all the results from that when I landed and it was all WhatsApp <laughs> pictures of you guys winning that game. So it was always good. I was on um, over to you, Shawnee. I think other than like taking over from me as fines master on the Torquay tour, what's your highlight? Um, I think mine, mine was a game from when I was about 17, I think. Um, we turned up, it was an away match at AWE Tadley with 10 players and we won. Um, Andy Stenny got his first ever ton, Kerry got five wickets, I think Lizo got a 50 and um, I got a bloke out after he hit me over a hedge. So, um, yeah, that was quite a nice memory. <coughs> Miss Hartnett, over to you. Yeah, I've definitely got to echo uh, Nat there saying about the World Cup final day. It was just unbelievable. <laughs> like when you're like 50 for eight, <laughs> and you think, we are, we are not in this. And then Emily Turner steps out, oh, I can't back. And it just saved the day for us. It was unbelievable. Um, but yeah, it's quite a few. Obviously, the, the promotions and that with the ones have been fantastic. But generally, it's just. Yeah, it's just nice being part of such a nice club. That so, yeah, there's too many. Obviously, tours are fantastic. If I, yeah. What, what goes great. on tour? What goes on tour stays on tour. though. no <laughs> fines. <laughs> <laughs> Over to you, Nettie. Um, I think for me, it's got to be um, best best a dark game at Daniel, which was not last season, the season before, um, and that's a really good feeling to actually play, play with him and he played a few more games last year and that's that's brilliant so I'm really not just the past but looking forward to that as well um personally probably one thing I can one game I can remember we we're playing Crown Taverners um two seasons ago not particularly nice team and this guy bounced me I was, I was in at number five we needed uh, I don't remember how many runs we got I was the last pair with uh, Max Morris I think and um, he bounced me really aggressive, really angry. And I smacked him for six um, square. And he was so cross, but it was such an amazing feeling uh, to do, do that because he was he, he was just being horrible. And to hit the guy for a six um, felt really, really good. I mean, it's a postage, postage, it's a small grand, but it was way into the car park. So I don't know if any of you know Crown Taverners, uh, but that, that was a good person. But otherwise, yeah, it's got to be it's got to be playing with Daniel. There have been a number of times with the, the Colts as well, where there's been really close games. Um, you know, probably more, more, which has been good, good for the, good for the game, where, where it's been really close and they've either won or lost sometimes, but won, um, and that, that's been a good feeling as well. So yeah, yeah. I, I can't add any bleeps on it. So, um, but are you able to tell us what you said to the guy after you hit it for six? <laughs> well, no, actually, because I, I no, I try and stay fairly calm when I'm there and he just he just just gave me evils and he tried it again the next ball I couldn't quite get him away the next ball but he was just very angry and it's on him I came, I stayed calm he didn't and we won in the end so <laughs> that was that was you know the main thing <laughs> excellent over to you Phil um 
Right, okay. Well, over the years, there's obviously been quite a few memories. Um, years ago, when I was 17, winning back-to-back uh, leagues with, with the first team under Alex Neri and Voisey and Ian and all that. Uh, it was obviously a great achievement back then. Um, leading out a lash inside. Uh, yeah, I've been grateful to be able to do that twice. Um Couple of hundreds, league hundreds that have all, you know, also, uh, you know, been a decent achievement. But you know, there, there's been various partnerships and and you know, and that. I remember one uh, a couple of years ago at, at South Wilts, um, another one of our our close friends in the league, and uh, <coughs> we happened to be um, chasing two. I think we were chasing two forty odd, and, and me and Dan were the last pair, and uh, I happened to play with with a broken hand. And I think I don't know what it what we what we did, Dan, but I think we must have nearly got a hundred partnership for the ninth for, for the tenth wicket um, yeah. with a broken hand, and they kept coming at me with shorter balls and shorter balls, and they kept hitting me. And I think probably you know of all the memories, I think that's the one that always sticks, where you know you, you grind you grind the result. We we lost in the end by I don't know twenty runs, but um, it was one of those ones where you think, you know what. We could do it here, we could not. But there's 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 been games we I think losing the last ball of the guy jewel um was one that, that hurt, but um you still yeah, you still you know, it's a great achievement to get to the guy jewel final. Um, yeah, there's plenty of memories of, of various individuals, you know. Kieran will tell you, you know, he was one of the worst cricketers you've seen at the age of fifteen. Um he's now, you know, scored some very, very good innings. Uh, Zach was one that we, you know, I must admit Three or four years ago, he was never really on the scene. Now he's been given his uh, his shout and become one of the best cricket odiums produced. And um, yeah, it's nice. There's there's all the memories you keep. You know, I think yeah, you've got your personal memories of, of big hundreds. And I remember going to to Basingstoke in a league game and, and hitting 125 off something like 50 balls uh, inside 20 overs, which I you know upset a few people that day. But yeah, um, hopefully many more to come. Not for a lot much longer. Top man. Uh, Kieran, obviously, I think every Saturday and Sunday you're playing down there. You play the midweek games and the guy jewels, so you must have a, a, a few like, nice memories to pick from. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a few. Um, but I think just really per- personally, uh, the year that I scored my f- first league ton in first five bag, um, which probably are only my sort of personal biggest achievements. Um, but there's there's loads of other games like you know guy jewels and you know those sort of games which you know they they are a memory when when you've played well and when you've had a, a good team team sort of playing as well. So yeah, that's the only main one for me. No, uh, good one, mate. I'm sure there's plenty more to come. Um, Sounds like Kieran's phoning in, like he's a, like on a radio show, and Kieran's just phoned in as a as a fan, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I'm on this morning. It's not Cheer up, Kieran. The, the work day's finished now, mate. <laughs> it's it's uh, oh, no. back to you now, Nick. So we'll move on to the more like um, comedy style. So we're looking for your funniest moment. And obviously you play with Spready, so you can't pick Spready's Ken Dodd jokes. Oh, yeah. Spready's banter is is, is brilliant, actually. Um, but actually, Kieran was involved in my funniest moment. Um, it was a game a couple of years ago. And, and I, I played on a Saturday and I, I was bowling and I had the easy, you know, it's like I had the easiest catch ever dropped. So I was trundling in on a Sunday afternoon and the bloke skies one right up into the covers, miles up into the air. So I screamed out, I've got it, I've got it. I started pegging it off to go and catch it, um, not realising that actually it was going straight to Kieran. <laughs> Anyway, I carried on running, carried on running, almost had to push him out the way, dive for the ball, clearly dropped it. <laughs> Everyone's wetting themselves laughing. And then, of course, you get all that every time, any, every, every, everywhere the ball goes for the next 20 minutes. Oh, Nick's ball, Nick's ball, Nick, get that, Nick, get this. <laughs> so um, that was quite funny, but um, well, we got away with it. Awesome. And Dan, over to you. If you want to pick a raffle one, you're welcome to do that as well. I sound quite boring here, but I, I tend to be your fault, mate. The funny stuff, yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> one that does stand out in an Odium shirt was on the Sunday after Kerry Bex's birthday party, and we celebrated promotion. <laughs> um, 
Me and, me and JT rocked up for a Sunday game at Bromley. And we were up. We, we shouldn't have been driving, put it that way. We <laughs> absolutely speed. And we walked in and Spready just looked at us both and went, you know what I'm going to do, don't you? And we're like, yeah, we're going to be batting. And then he just went, yeah, you're both going to open. And I didn't. It, it, the first ball, I didn't even see it. It was... It was a blur. Safe to say I was out second ball and then proceeded to <laughs> the changing room and not appear for another two hours. Yeah. <laughs> but no, there's, there's obviously, you have the, there's many. Yeah. The la- yeah, there's, there is many, but that's probably one that stands out. Yeah. Also, we've thought about. <laughs> Over to you, Zach. Um... Probably for me, um, a Sunday game a couple of years ago against Dogmasfield and Sinjin was sat on his um, on his little crutch because he'd, he'd injured himself at square leg umpiring. And um, yeah, it fell out from underneath him and he just splatters onto the floor. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> it's probably got to be my funniest. Was it as graceful as his um, bowling after running around the um, ball 10 times? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully less wine involved though. <laughs> now, how about you? What's the fun, the the comedy moment? Uh, good question. I can't really like pick one. All I can remember is last summer, genuinely just spending all the time in the field laughing, uh, mostly at myself when just like randomly fall over or just completely forget how to catch or throw or anything. Um, or over the winter, laughing every time Becky ran me out, which was quite a lot. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, um, I guess I've seen a few batsman collisions where uh, the two batsmen, um, when they're going for a run, run into each other. But I guess Pete Hodgson, um, he was fielding and he was chasing a ball out to Cow Corner at Oakley. And if you've played at Oakley, you know there's a big wooden, there's like a wooden fence around the pitch. <laughs> Um, he flipped the ball back, kept running, fence breaks, and he just hit the deck. But he just con- he just got up, continued, threw the ball back in, and saved two. Whilst the rest of us were on the floor laughing, which is remarkable. He just didn't seem to feel any pain or anything. Excellent. What about your performances at Abbott's Curse? Well, Sean. Well, well um, I I don't think I found them particularly funny. Um, I'm, oh, okay. I'm sure you guys love them, but. <laughs> Phil goes on tour on podcasts. Yeah, true. We mention tour on podcasts. So yeah. Abbott's curse will get the bin. Definite, definite fine for Phil. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Becky? Oh, this is going back to one of um, one of the first seasons that I was at Odeon. It's like a few years ago. Um, we were training outside, and um, Tina Smee, she, me and her, we were fielded doing some sort of fielding drill. And one of the balls, it went on the square and Andrew had had the sprinklers on like, all day and it was absolutely soaked and you couldn't see it. And I can't remember, I cannot from the life of me remember the name of the girl, but she ran down, <laughs> went around on the square. She was dressed in all white as well. You can guess what happens next. Bam. <laughs> so straight up. And me and Tina and me were absolutely dying laughing. It was so funny. <laughs> No, it doesn't sound very funny now. Did but she get? Did she get? Cha- have to get changed? Does she carry on like that for the rest of it? I do you know. I can't even remember. I think I pretty much fainted from laughing because it was so funny. <laughs> I can't actually remember. That, that's definitely my most funny moment. Oh, and also another one. Somebody falling over. I was playing in one of the first team games at Alton a few years ago, and it was absolutely <laughs> lashing it down. And Walshy, running, went to uh, slide his bat in, obviously, being quite a big chap. He was, was he batting in trenders, Phil? I can't remember. Yeah. But yeah. just like skidded and just hit the deck. Like, uh, that was another really funny one. And That's it. In. In my head. <laughs> Next over to you. Have any of our players ever ended up into your um, workplace in need of treatment I, after the game? You know what? No, no, that wouldn't be funny. But <laughs> if, I, if I did find that funny, then I'd be quite um, sadistic, more sadistic than I already am. But, uh, <laughs> but no, I've, I think there has been. I've, I was watching a first game, I think, and I'm sure somebody knocked their tooth out or seconds game. 
I wasn't playing in that game, but um, but no funny things. I'm gonna quite clearly say if there's any game that I'm playing in with Sinjin, I'm laughing. I don't think he intentionally means to be funny, but he is. <laughs> he's just his batting, his bowling, his fielding, everything makes me laugh. You know, and stuff that he says. <laughs> <it's just> like, <laughs> He's hilarious. Um, I'm not sure he means that, but <laughs> he's hilarious. Um, so yeah. So and as others have said, you know, in playing with them, um, Spready, just the banter really, and not it's it's never against the other team. It's usually you know within the team nicknames. There's lots of dental references that come up um, quite often. Uh, some of them rude, some of them not. <laughs> so uh, I have to uh, put up with that. But um, yeah, otherwise, yeah, there's been a couple of funny incidents with me. I did this, um, you know, standing sort of silly, silly mid off, and this guy came in, he must have been coming in number six or seven, smacked it as hard as he could. And I just stood there and I call it my belly catch because it went into my belly. I groaned. <laughs> Everyone thought I was injured. But it was, I caught it, I got it. And everyone was sort of cracking up cause, just because of the noise that I made. <laughs> it's like a bit of a grunt and a, and a kind of a. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I had big bruises on my belly, actually. Fortunately, I've got quite a lot of padding there. So, <laughs> <laughs> Zach, Zach, we lost you there for a little bit. If, if yeah, now... so, yeah, my internet just went back now. That's right. Cool. Have you got another funny moment for us? <laughs> um, I don't know, mate. Probably, probably just the one. <laughs> Good man. Okay, on, on to you, Phil. Oh, crikey. Um... And, yeah, there's there's quite a, there's quite a few. Um, one from a from a long time ago. I remember um, getting out on a Saturday and being quite upset about getting out, um, which is unlike me. And uh, took my gloves off one day and um, decided to kick my gloves back onto the veranda. Um, unfortunately, the wind managed to catch them at the same time, and uh, I volleyed my glove on top of the roof, um, <laughs> which, which wasn't pleasant when you're having to get a uh, a shin up from your brother onto the roof of the old club to get your glove back at the end of the day. But um, yeah, there's, there's just been quite a lot. Um, uh, a, a lot of the guys will remember the uh, the chocolate shampoo incident. Um, <laughs> that, that can't be mentioned. Um, uh, I, I remember having. I think one of the, the one of the funniest and probably the worst days looking back on it now was was I remember playing in a Sunday game. I never tend to play Sunday games, but. I'd been at a 21st birthday the night before and um, added a couple of um, shandies and uh, didn't feel too great the following day. And we, we turned up at Odium to play and it turned out we were in the wrong place. We should have been playing at Farley Wallop. Anyway, we turned up there. They thought they were playing at Odium. So they've come to our ground. We've gone to their ground. Gates are locked. <laughs> um, I've had a bit of a call of nature and uh, obviously have driven off trying to find... Um, suitable facilities and, and nothing was open anyway the guys turned up at Farley and we got the game underway they opened the clubhouse and I said to the guy um excuse me um do you know where the toilets are and he said oh we haven't got any facilities here unfortunately and I was like really and um anyway find it funny my brother was the captain at the time he said well there's a social club down the road go there so I ran down there uh, or waddled down there and um it did open until four o'clock, so I was in a bit of a bit of a dilemma. So my brother decided to open the batting with me, and uh, I thought I just need to just just carry on, get a couple of runs, and and, and then I can go and sort myself out. And uh, anyway, I ended up getting 127, and every shot that I hit seemed to go for six or for four, and I couldn't get out. Anyway, the half past five came, and I had eventually managed to find uh, the facilities, and uh, it, it was a good day all around. I ended up picking up a five bag after that, so. Um, yeah, but there there were there are quite a few moments that um obviously aren't aren't for this this podcast and for for, for small ears. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll leave. What about <laughs> we'll leave when uh, Nav split his trousers at Basingstoke and then dropped jam from his donut all down? <laughs> that that was also quite a funny moment. <laughs> yeah, when he split his crotch <laughs> <laughs> in the middle or, of the game. Or old Tom's not here to defend himself. No. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there's, uh, there's a few, but I think the one apparently that um, I can think of was it was on a, sun, a Sunday game at him with Zach, and I'm sure Zach will remember this. <laughs> um, the night before, after having quite a lot to drink, 
um, we we opened the batting and we both said to each other, no freeze. There's no freeze. There's either ones or fours or sixes. No twos, threes. And for the last next 45 minutes, we're spent running threes with a very bad stomach, a very bad head, and wanting the urge to just puke. Um, <laughs> so we we thought we both decided to just do our usual, well, my usual thing, and just hit up in the air and run up to the toilet. <laughs> yeah. it, it was quite remarkable how many of those um, stories started with "I'd had a few drinks the night before." <laughs> <laughs> you always seem to be on a Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, moving start. on to the next one. Um, and apart from like Dan's excellent Facebook um, challenges, have you guys managed to do any like um, training while insulation isolation? Sorry. Over to you, Nick. First, sorry on that one, mate. Well, I'd say in the threes, we take um, a fairly liberal view about training. Um, <laughs> some of the boys think having a net would consider the be considered over training so i'd say probably the lockdown's come at a pretty good time for us um and we're we're ready as soon as the season starts mate fantastic excellent and dan uh no not really i've kind of gone you know what i've not had a for the past three years i've not had a pre-season so i've always been away so it's no different so i kind of like might as well make it four um i have been in the garden with sarah and as normal, my bowling goes to all parts. Easy. Do <laughs> wicket every now and again, um, but it tends to go to all parts. Sarah did nearly take out next door's little one the other day. Let's see, absolutely creamed it. But yeah, that's about as much as I'm getting is the bowling at Sarah. You you become like professional TikTokers as well, aren't you? <coughs> yeah. Well, I'm I'm part time. Sarah's full time. <laughs> Current, she's currently sat scrolling through TikTok trying to find something to do over the next few days. But she's coming, she's becoming quite in demand. <laughs> Excellent. I look forward to seeing those ones. Oh, oh, Zach, how about you? Managed to get any training in? Um, well, I don't know about training, but my my brother's back from uni and we've been, uh, been having some pretty good backyard cricket. Um, yeah, competitions gets very competitive. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Had a few What's the average, Zach? <laughs> <laughs> 1,349 not out. <laughs> <laughs> just keep speeding drive. How about you, Nat? I saw you You, you um, stepped up and did one of Dan's challenges. Have you done much else? Uh, tried to bolt out things and just completely missed them. So, uh, yeah, can't say my bowling's improving at all. Um, yeah, not really much. Just uh, keeping the fitness up and things. Trying to keep sane, that sort of thing. Excellent. Shawnee? Um, nah, not a lot of cricket. But what I will say is, um, if cricket consists of running around the stump and bowling, then the twos are doing all right because Jamie LaRue smashed it. And so, But that's it, really. Um, just a lot of running and no real cricket, unfortunately. Good man. And Becky, I've seen that you actually managed to do as part of your daily exercise, get to the um, home of cricket earlier as well. Yeah, so I cycled up there. I, cycled, I went out for ages today, actually. Um, that was nice. I just strolled around the boundary like it was a Saturday as well. <laughs> that was nice. But no, um, I've actually joined the dark side and gone over to um, Hersey Park. They've um, got a quarantine cup going on. So like all of their girls, because I know like literally all of them from uh, like old Hampshire days and stuff. And yeah, they, we do like different challenges each week. So this week's one is um, like the Tom Moore challenge. So each team's of eight. And then you have to like run in your full kit, like runs, but and it's split into like three out for, uh, throughout your teammates. You have to run like 625 metres in full kit. <laughs> and it's been like challenges like that. And How would you do yeah, it? It's really cool, actually. And they've had like throwing challenges, batting challenges and stuff. It's really cool. So, yeah, I've, I've hopped on board with them, uh, I'm afraid to say. <laughs> yeah, we'll, uh, we'll have to do it. So I know we were look, it was, when it was the management committee looking at closing the nets, it was quite a hard decision. But I think mean, it's like with the social distancing, there was no real choice, unfortunately, because be, that would be a nice place for people to get down there and still be able to do it. But 
just yeah, get up on. Like in the confines of your own home or garden or whatever so yeah mm. whatever they've done has been yeah tailored to do at home so no um, need to be far. how about you Nettie have you been putting the boys through their paces in the garden yeah yeah so we've um so other than the spinny thing which um by the way, if anyone wants to ever buy me a present, maybe a belt and a pair of uh, braces to hold my trousers up will be good. <laughs> um, yeah, so we 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 signed up to um, Adam Sher's uh, HE's um, four week training program. Um, it's the first time he'd done it, so it's kind of an online, so it's a new thing for him. But um, actually, it's pretty good. So as the weather was quite good, it was it it was great because we could get out there. Um, and do most of the drills. There's a lot of fitness in there as well, so which I was joining in with Daniel. Um, as the schools went back, so after the Easter holidays, it got a bit harder to do to keep up with it. Um, so yes, yeah, so we followed, basically did four weeks of training, different um, batting, fielding, um, uh, bowling exercises as well. So plus a lot, of, uh, quite a bit of fitness, um, so planking and all that sort of stuff. Core fitness. So actually, a, a, a fair bit actually, which has been pretty good. But we're looking forward to it. It, it gets hard in the garden because um, <laughs> the first week, Daniel, uh, we played with hardball, and I said, please hit it along the ground, please. But he didn't. He hit it in the air. It, I think it went into Des's garden because Des lives near us. So <laughs> it's probably about three gardens away. So fortunately, there were no greenhouses or people in their gardens. Otherwise, it would have been. Uh, trip to any for someone. I'm but, just um, they didn't catch it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's been good. Uh, but, and you, Mr. Thomas, although you'd like, apart from um, keeping the local community in beer and compost, have you got time for the training? <laughs> um, always, mate. You know, obviously it's an unfortunate situation that that the gym is shut, and uh, you know, so um, you know, every evening I'm, I'm looking for something to do. Um, uh, but yeah, apart from picking up a couple of four bags, like yeah, four for twenty-one the other day against Charlie in the garden, not, <laughs> not really, you know, a couple of like knocks in the thirties and forties. It's certainly in, in touch, really. Um, but yeah, it, no, not not a lot to be fair. Um, yeah, I've done a little mini pub crawl on on my bike, but everywhere seems to be shut at the moment. So um, <clears throat> it's sort of been yeah, a bit bit useless really. So but yeah, I, you know, I'm ready to go whenever. Cool. Bill, uh, when you're bowling to Charlie, do you still give him a send off? <laughs> <laughs> you, have to, you have to, Sean. If one nips off a length and, and he gloves it past off his throat, then you know you, you tell him where to go. Um, <laughs> you, you know you've got to keep that passion for winning, Sean. Whether it's yeah. in, you know in the nets in the garden or, or out on the out on the wicket, mate. You, you, you know you've got to keep it going. Exactly. Teach him early. Bill, how was the uh, cricket nineteen going? <laughs> Cricket 19 is brilliant. Um, so what? So basically, so I'm average, I'm glad you brought it up, Dan. Um, <laughs> so I've, I've gone through the ranks of playing village cricket. I'm I'm, I'm playing for Hampshire now. I've just done a stint at the Sheffield Shield um, for, for West Australia, and I'm averaging just over 40 at the moment. Um, so you know, I'm looking for a selection in, in the uh, England 2020 squad. It's it's on its way. Um, as soon as this call's done and my little boy gets off the Xbox, I, you know, I, just a couple of hours tonight will do it. I, I'll keep you posted on that. Did you pay Dan to ask that one? No, it, it, Dan thinks he's better than me, but he's, <laughs> you know, he's, I've, he's I've playing, got, I've he's got playing the for Leeds, so it's you know, it's it's it's, it's harder up north, isn't it? I've got the I've got the same game, and I've what am I? I'm averaging about sixty. I was doing about 60 odd and I have a strike rate of about 140 because I refuse to I refuse to back time. That's a lot better than your play cricket stats then, isn't it? Mate, Amazing. if I could put them on there, they'd be excellent. <laughs> <laughs> but I have just signed for Yorkshire, so... Oh, that's good. Well done, mate. That's I'm good. On the way home. Sounds like it sounds like we, uh, that's a future challenge. If you two can play against each other, then we will record mate, that. Stick it on cricket there. 19 party, I think it'll be wonderful. <laughs> yes. So the, the last one to get through on this one was like, um, Kieran. I think when I first came to the club, like every time I'd be in there, like um, in the in the clubhouse enjoying the muddler, you and Scotty would be down in the nets until it was dark, and often after it was dark, and playing pretty much every night, or so every day of the week. You might, like, are you still managing to train at all? No, no training. Just uh, go for a few runs here and there, and that's about it, really. To the yeah. garage and back here and yeah. 
<laughs> Pretty much. I might go to the co-op. So, um, essential, <laughs> essential trips only. Exactly. There's no better way of you know going for the exercise and rewarding yourself for doing it. So. Cool. Well, we're gonna have a. Well, I think we, we're coming towards the um, the end of it, um, guys. So I think we'll do a quick rapid fire one because every in isolation, a lot of people are turning to like the Netflix box sets or like Amazon Prime. And so you just get it to say like, what's your um, lockdown box set that you've enjoyed so far? Like starting with Nick. Mine's easy. Don't mess with the Peaky Blinders, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, have you got a hat? I'm not one for sitting in front of the TV all the time, um, but I I have been watching the test on Amazon Prime, just listening to how the Aussies are crits. I'm going to say that because I watched I watched the one today and it was start of the acid and it was kind of just annoying, really. But I do I have got. Through watching it, I have, I have got a, um, built a bit of respect for them and how they play the game. Uh, but just some of the stuff. Yeah. Basically, you're not like watching line, it. Like the line drops the ball down, then you'll love it. Oh, I can't wait. That, that's the last <laughs> one I need to watch. Him. Excellent. I'll have yeah. to give it on a go. Zach. Uh, Narcos on Netflix. It's pretty good. So, yeah. Excellent. Matt. It's got to be Tiger King. I mean, there's just not the same person on that program. It's absolutely <laughs> eye-opening. <laughs> no, no chance of Carol Baskin to t- turn out for ladies team next year then? <laughs> absolutely no chance. <laughs> uh, well, it's Becky's decision, but I'm not going to say that we should select her. <laughs> <laughs> if she brings a tiger, she's definitely not coming in. <laughs> <laughs> Sean? Um, probably Westworld. Um, but I'm kind of waiting for um, them to start showing all the Euro 96 games. I might binge watch those. Oh, yeah. yeah. What's that going to be showed on? ITV, I think. Yeah, I think it's ITV. ITV yeah. Every game. Yeah, see if ITV will give us some advertising money now. Becky? <laughs> um, like now, I've watched Binge Tiger King and Afterlife as well. That was really good. And I'm really embarrassed to say that I've been really enjoying Gossip Girl. <laughs> it's old school. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm loving it. Letty, I think you're, you're obviously going to be in a state of mourning at the moment because they've cancelled um, Love Island today, haven't they? Oh, I know. I was devastated. I thought, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just... Um, really? I think uh, we've, we've, um, we've watched Good Girls, which is which is quite... The first season was quite good. Second season started to get a bit annoying. Um we've been watching a bit of stranger things uh, or daniel has so he's just 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 let him he's a 15 but just let him watch that um brooklyn 99 which is hilarious um really funny and the other one's just just on the second season of afterlife so that's a bit bit more thought provoking uh, yeah but, but there's this so it's quite quite a, quite a lot of netflix and movie watching really cool philip um much the same mate target king afterlife friday night dinner is also an absolute yeah. belter yeah um yeah currently working myself through um disney life at the moment mate. you know toy story one two three and four is all on the cards <laughs> this week and, um yeah you know yeah apart from that like i said i've watched the test that's quite amusing um but yeah no apart from that, that yeah that's that's about it cool and i'm nervous about this one kieran keep it clean <laughs> Um, <laughs> so there's, there's two two lots on Netflix that I've been going through, um, which is John Wick, all all three of those, and American Pie. Ah, yeah, cool. Nice, classic. So, yeah. 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 Well, we managed. It's, it's to... pretty fun. We we managed to do that bang on, guys. But really appreciate. It. I know, like, um, obviously we're we're looking to get stuff for the website. So really appreciate your time, and we'll we'll look. To, I think we're going to look to do one with the coaches as well. So um, we'll we'll do another one. But much appreciated. I'll stop recording now. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Matthew. There you go. Good to see you guys. Well done.